Hi guys, this is Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at stand development. Stand development is a process by which you develop your black and white film with a highly diluted developer for an extended amount of time with minimal agitation. When you stand develop your film, basically what you're doing is changing one step of the process and that would be just the development stage. So just to cover black and white development in a, in a nutshell, you have your pre-wash uh, where you just put water in there at 68 degrees. What that does is it gets your uh, film down to the operating temperature of the developer. Next step would be the developer. Normally uh, you do development, the development step for six and a half minutes at 68 degrees with a normal concentration of developer. Stand development differs again because the, the developer is so diluted that second development step takes a lot longer it can be 30 minutes it can be 45 minutes it can be an hour it can be three hours in the beginning i'll do an agitation after pouring the developer in then let it sit for 35 minutes and then do a second agitation and then let it sit for another 35 minutes and from that point on you technically don't even need a stop bath because the developer would have been completely exhausted at that point because remember, there's very little developer in your, you know, in your development step, and it's it's completely used up. But uh, I I do a stop bath just with water, you know, just to kind of rinse it off, and then I go to the uh, fixer. Uh, so all the subsequent steps are going to be just normal. I typically use just enough developer to cover the spool that's inserted into the uh, development tank. There, um, 35 millimeter film. A single spool will take 350 milliliters of developer um, and 6x6 six six or medium format uh, single spool will take 550 milliliters of developer. So that's just enough to cover the spool in the tank during your development uh, stage. When you stand develop your film, you get a much broader tonal range um, with just tons of, of different shades of gray. So it gives you a really pleasing image. But uh, the, the headline really with stand development is how well it uh, holds on to your highlights and how much more shadow detail you get out of your, uh, you know, out of your regular black and white film. So let's say that this is your film. OK, the developer hits your film and it's again, it's very diluted. So there comes a point since you're not you're not agitating it, you're not introducing new uh, and fresh developer to your film because that's the whole point of agitation. Anytime you agitate the film, it, you you uh, add new developer or it, you know it mixes up the developer and gives you fresh developer touching the film, which will uh, continue to to uh, develop your film. So if you don't if you don't agitate, um, what happens is the highlight part of your film uses up the developer quicker. Okay, so the highlights are not ever really gonna it's gonna be hard put it in those terms it's gonna be hard to blow out your highlights because the the very diluted development uh, developer is just gonna use up the developer a lot quicker and then at that point will be ineffective in terms of developing your your bright portions of your picture your highlights anymore your shadows on the other hand develop a lot slower they use up the developer slower and continues to develop for a lot longer than your highlights so in that way you get the best of both you get highlights that are not blown out and then you get shadow detail that just you know comes out just really really uh really really nice another advantage is um perceived sharpness okay um due to increased micro contrast you get the 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 parts of the uh, film that uh were dark sections may meet the light section or lighter you know lighter part of your photo they're going to show a, a increased contrast which in in turn will give you an in, uh, increased uh, appearance of sharpness all right so the the negatives do come out nice and sharp tons of tonal range tons of shadow detail and your highlights are well preserved another advantage of stand development is that you're actually able to use variable isos uh, on the same roll of film so in other words, this uh, this roll here of uh, HP5 
uh, plus 400 speed. I can I can run it at 400 uh, in the same camera on the same roll. I can actually go 800, 1600, 3200, and the stand development again just given the nature of how it develops the film, you know, and just kind of developing what it in turn in in essence what it needs to develop. It'll in effect give you variable ISOs possible on the same roll of film. Um, I've shot some, I actually have a, a roll developing right now. It's in its second 35 minute cycle. I've done the, you know, the initial agitation for 20 seconds and I did the, um, the let it stand for 35 minutes and I've already done the second agitation. So it's working on the last 35 minutes and the last few frames of uh, of this roll I shot all the way from 400 right on up to 3200 and I did a set where I think it actually hit 6400 so in theory all those um, photos should look the same they should all look properly exposed um, because again stand development continues to develop as long as it can find detail and as long as the um, the developer is not completely exhausted so we'll see if that theory is true um, you know, can you actually go that many, um, that many, uh, uh, ISOs from all the way from 400 to 3,200? We'll, we'll soon find out. Some films like, uh, HP5, I believe can be shot at 400 or 800 without actually changing the development times. I think that's true of Tri-X as well. Um, so uh, that, that's why I decided just to go all the way up to 3,200 and 6,400 just to see, you know, what I end up with and, and uh, you know what the what the photos look like. You can use uh, pretty much any type of uh, black and white developer. I use HC one hundred and ten. It's just my go to. It's very very uh, flexible, and it, it's it, it's a very old developer. A lot of folks love Rodenol. That's that's also a really good developer. Um, you you may have noticed my little my bottle of HC one hundred and ten is is squashed up a little bit here. Um, the reason for that is to keep air out of the bottle. So what I do is I just when I'm finished using it, I'll just squeeze it, and it's easier if you squeeze from the bottom. I'll squeeze all the air out of it and close it right there. And the reason that I do that, if you see the brown gunk right here that builds up when when air hits the developer, um, I had a my last bottle of HC110 had just the brown gunk all over the place, and you know because there was air all the way down to here. I just saw this tip online where. Uh, you know, people are just, they squeeze their, the bottle just to get all the air out. And as you can see, since having done that, there's none of the brown gunk in there. And make sure, guys, when you're doing this, that you do mix your developer really, really well before using it. You want to make 100% sure that the, that it is completely, completely um, uh, perfectly mixed up. Because if you, you know, again, there's not a whole lot of developer in there. So what you do have in there, you want to make sure that it's... Uh, that is correctly mixed. You should have like a really faint yellow looking uh, developer, a really, really light yellow if you've uh, correctly mixed it. And it should be, uh, of course, uniform all the way up, all the way through the, uh, uh, as you look at the developer. Some of the negatives that, that you may run into with stand development, uh, one of which is a haloing effect. Um, in the areas of your photo where you, let's say that you have a, a dark part of your photo that's surrounded by a brighter, uh, brighter part of the photo. You may actually see a halo effect. A dark object in your photo may just be surrounded by a by a halo, um, and that's just the the developer being pulled into the darker areas. Uh, like I mentioned before, the the shadow detail continues to develop, so uh, those darker areas are attracting the developer. Another phenomenon you might run into is called uh, bromide drag. Bromide drag is where if you look at your 35 millimeters uh, film uh, at each sprocket hole, you might see um, like a, um, looks like a paintbrush stroke maybe, you know, just something that's coming down at each sprocket hole. The reason that I do what's called semi-stand developing versus stand developing um, is because is to prevent the the that phenomenon for from appearing when I develop my thirty five millimeter film. Uh, it it is helpful to do a single ad, agitation in the middle of the development stage. That'll get rid of that bromide drag. Uh, 
And it's especially bad with a 35 millimeter film because, again, you it has the sprocket holes. Okay, so what I'm doing with this uh, demonstration today is I'm going to take uh, my two Leicas here. All right, a Leica M6 Classic with the small shutter speed dial, not the TTO, and my Leica M3 Single Stroke. Both of these cameras have a 50 millimeter Summicron. Um, obviously, they're different. They're different ones. They're not exactly the same Summicron. This is the the dual range uh, Summicron, and this is the uh, Type 4 uh, Summicron. This this is a little bit newer lens. This one is is hailed as as one of the best uh, Summicrons that like has ever made. At least the historical ones. I I'm, I'm sure the the modern ones are much better than both of these, but they're both really really sharp lenses. Uh, very well made and the reason that I'm using these two cameras and these two lenses is because they're both 50 millimeters from the same manufacturer and if we know our Leicas we know that a Summicron is an f2 so they're both 50 millimeter f2s and so I'm, I'm trying to just ha try to trying to have just the, as close as possible the uh, the same lens all right um, and uh, using Ilford HP 5 plus this is these are 24 exposure rolls each um, so, and Ilford is a, it's a, just a beautiful film. Um, I've done a lot of stand development with Tri-X and I, I purposely dug up some of these uh, Ilford rolls that I knew I had in the freezer somewhere. And um, I figured this time I'll, I'll do some stand developing with uh, Ilford just to see if there's any, anything notable, notable or noteworthy between the two. Cause I'm pretty familiar with how Tri-X and, and T-Max come out at this point. The other part of this test is I'm going to, develop one using the conventional method and I'm going to develop the other role using the stand development method and then we're going to look at the uh, and compare the you know the uh, negatives and and the scans and everything to see if we have any inherent advantage is all the stuff um, that uh, is said about stand developing is that actually true do the, do the photos come out sharper is the is the tonal range going to be better? Is it true that you can actually shoot the same role at different ISOs? I mean, vastly different ISOs, like all the way from 400 to 3200 or even 6400 and come out with a properly exposed negative in every case when you stand develop. Uh, we know, according to the manufacturer, you can you can do a step or, or a stop or two um, on the, the same role and develop it normally but no manufacturer claims that you can shoot all the way to 3200 without increasing the development times which means that the whole roll has to be shot at that iso you can't have variable isos on a single roll all right so we're going to test all those uh, claims and and all those theories that everybody is saying about the stand development process and and see how they come out i'm going to target some high contrast scenes to see how those uh, shadows hold up and uh and the uh, highlights are preserved yeah, and, and so we'll see if all the, the hype is true. We're going to go out with these two cameras. I'm going to get them loaded up uh, with the Ilford HP5. And we're going to uh, go out, take some photos with the two uh, Leicas and the two Summicrons. And we're going to come back and stand develop and, and see what we think. Okay, guys, so we set out to test the premise that you can use different ISOs, variable ISOs, on the same roll of film. And as long as you stand develop them, uh, they'll come out fine. And as we see here, you have ISOs all the way from 400 to 6400, and the photos all look pretty good. Um, I think I would personally use maybe up to 3200. I don't think I would quite go to 6400 because the shadows really t tend to get uh, muddy at that point, and there's, the shadow detail is pretty much gone. If you want a really contrasty photo, though, that's perfectly fine. If you if you're not trying to pull the shadows. Uh, 6400 is perfectly fine. As we look at the normal development method, uh, 400 and 800 is fine per the manufacturer's recommendation. Same development time, whether you, you run your roll at 400 or 800. So kind of keep that in mind. If you need an extra stop and you're not doing stand development, then you can shoot your, your roll at 400 or 800 and you can change it you know, mid-roll and still get perfectly acceptable results. But you really can't ignore the fact that at 1600 and higher, uh, it's like the film falls off of a cliff. It goes completely dark, and it's nowhere near as usable as if it were developed using stand development. So let's take a look at this photo that was stand developed. Uh, if you 
look under the awning, you can see there's tons of shadow detail there and everything is pretty well maintained. The photo is kind of flat. It's not as punchy and contrasty as you may uh, have come to expect a uh, black and white film to be. But the, the good news is that, uh, you know, you have the detail there. So you're always able to add contrast. If your shadows are crushed, then you don't have the option to, to pull that detail out of the shadows. So um, pretty good situation. As we look at this photo here, there's plenty of detail uh, in the highlights uh, in the sky. The details were well preserved, as were, if you look at the bottom half of the photo, the shadow detail uh, was equally well preserved. This is probably one of the best examples I can show as to how well stand development works uh, in high contrast photos. This photo of the structure so shows a little bit uh, increase in sharpness if you look at the vertical lines in the in the concrete and you get you can also see a little bit um, more detail in the steel beam and to be honest I haven't seen a huge uh, difference in sharpness between a normally developed photo and a stand developed photo but I, I think the headline really is um, how well the the shadow detail is preserved and how you don't lose the, the highlight detail as a result. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for stopping by. This is Eric with the Film Photography Channel. We'll see you on the next one.